Okay, everyone, it's all come down to this. Let's talk about the Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 2. Big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Noel, better known to you as the Big D, so I'm going to be bringing to you all my final review of the Twilight Saga. It's Breaking Dawn Part 2 from 2012. If you've not seen my review of Part 1 or the rest of the Twilight movies, I strongly advise you to stop this video at once and click on the card that's about to show up right about now. Okay. I'm going to give you a few seconds to click on that and watch my playlist before you continue watching this review, okay? Okay, wanted to give you a few seconds. Anyway, this is it, the final installment. Anyway, Bill Condon returns as the director, all three main cast members... Our bad Kristen Stewart as Bella, Robert Panson as Edward, and Taylor Lautner as Jacob. With Mackenzie Foy playing Bella and Edward's daughter, Renesmee. Wait, Renesmee. Sorry, my mistake. Sorry, I pronounced that way. My apologies. Also, Billy Burke's back and. Pierre Fatsonelli, Elizabeth Reeser, Kellen Lutz, and a few others return after being absent from the last movie, with the exception of Michael Sheen, who made a brief appearance in the end of the last one. Dakota Fanning is back as well. With a spiky and mixed critical reception, the film was a mega hit, making almost a hundred, uh, making almost eight hundred. Whoops, I almost said uh, almost eight hundred thirty million worldwide, becoming the sixth highest grossing film of the year and the highest grossing film of the franchise to date. Anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah, all right. Bella, who has just given birth, awakens from her human to vampire transformation and is introduced to our daughter, Renesme. The rest of the Collins and Jacob stay nearby, and when Jacob acts possessively towards Renesme, Bella learns he has imprinted on her, making her furious until Jacob explains what it is. Meanwhile, Bella's father, Charlie, has been trying to contact the Cullens for updates on Bella's health. Carlisle comes to believe that they have to leave Forks to protect their identities, especially because of Charlie. Jacob, desperately, desperate not to lose Renee's May, visits Charlie and tells him that Bella is alive and well, but had to change in order to get better. Jacob also tells Charlie he doesn't live in the world he thinks he lives in, but says nothing about vampires. He then reveals his wolf form to Charlie, and then visits the Cullen house and meets Renesme. Afterward, the Cullens are able to stay in Forks. Several months pass with Carlisle monitoring Renesme's rapid growth. Yeah, growing like crazy. On an outing in the woods, a bitter Irina sees Renesme from a distance and assumes she's an immortal child without asking any questions. Immortal children were vampires who were changed in childhood, and because they could not be trained nor restrained, they destroyed entire villages. They were eventually executed, as were the parents who created them, and the creation of such children outlawed. Irina goes to the Volturi to report what she has seen. Alice sees the Volturi and Irina coming to kill the Collins, and instructs the others to gather as many witnesses as they can to testify that Renesmee is not an immortal child. Alice and Jasper then leave and try and gather evidence of this. The Collins begin to summon witnesses such as the Denali family. One of the Denali, Elizar, 
later discovers that Bella has a special ability, a powerful mental shield which had protected her from Edward's mind reading even when she was human, and which she is taught to extend to protect others from vampire powers. As some of their potential witnesses are attacked and prevented from supporting the Cullens, Carlisle and Edward realize they may have to fight the Volturi. Their witnesses ultimately agree to stand with them in battle, having realized the Volturi increased their guard by falsely accusing covens of crimes, destroying them and then recruiting the vampires with gifts. The Volturi arrive, prepared for battle, led by Arrow, who is eager to obtain the gifted members of the Cullen Coven as part of his guard. Arrow is allowed to touch Renee's May, but it's but is convinced that she is not an immoral child. Irina is brought forth and takes full responsibility for her mistake, leading to her immediate death. Arrow still insists that Renes may, may pose a risk in the future, validating his claim that battle is necessary. Now, to the ending, you know the procedure, five seconds to stop, go to the description box below, and fast forward to the time below if you've seen the movie already, continue. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Sorry, I went rapid fire on that. But you you always know the procedure. Okay. Before any violence, Alice and Jasper return, and Alice shares with Arrow her vision of the battle that is to come, during which both sides sustain heavy casualties, including Arrow, who would also die. Arrow believes her, giving Alice and Jasper an opportunity to reveal their witness, Nahul, a half-human, half-vampire, just like Ren is me. The witness proves that he is not a threat, supporting the notion that Ren is me is not a threat. The Volturi unhappily leave, explaining that there will no be no battle today. Back at the Cullen home, Alice glimpses the future, seeing Edward and Bella together with Jacob and fully matured Renee's May also together. Edward reads Alice's mind and feels relieved that Renee's May has Jacob to protect her. Alone in the meadow, Bella pushes her mental shield away and finally allows Edward to see into her mind, showing him every moment she and Edward share together, and the two share a kiss after Bella telling Edward, Nobody has ever loved anybody as much as I love you, and both Edward and Bella say they will love each other and be together forever. End of story. So what did I think of Breaking On Part 2? I will say it was a was good in what I have. You know what I mean? Most critics did think it was a little better than its predecessor. The first part. And anyway, the film still became a mega hit, and I'm going to say, I thought it was fun in ways. I mean, the vision of the battle was pretty darn epic in my view. This was one of the good parts about it. I mean, I like the performances from everyone. I mean, Including Kristen Stewart, Robert Panson, Taylor Lautner, and of course young Mackenzie Foy. And of course we have Ashley Green as Alice, Jackson Rathborn as Jasper, um, Pierre Fascinelli as Carlisle, Elizabeth Reister as Esme, Kellen Lutz as Emmett, and Nikki Reed as Rosalie. Anyway. Oh yeah, and Michael Sheen is Arrow. Yeah, this had some fun moments and what have you. And well, I gotta tell you, this film featured a big pre credits montage of all the actors from all of the the three the three movies from the main books and the two parts of, of course, Breaking Dawn. Which was a surprise, actually. But anyway, the story isn't too bad either. I mean, like I said, I've never read the Twilight books. Maybe I kind of wish, but I don't know. I have some respect for this, though. 
But anyway, and also the music was good. Carter Burwell does the score, which isn't too bad. Anyway, now they they have been talking about doing spinoffs made for this, but well, there still hasn't been one. And of course, um, we do know that last year, I believe, we got well new book, which I think served as a I don't know, a prequel or continuation, or I don't know, called Midnight Sun. That's possibly going to be made into a movie, but I don't know. We'll see what happens down the road. But with still with the same good cast and a few additional ones and what have you, a pretty reasonably good story and what have you, and a pretty epic bell, but only in a kind of a vision and what have you, and good... And a good score. Would I recommend Breaking Dawn Part 2? Well, let me put it to you this way. Yes. That, yes. It, but, however, if you're a completionist, if you're a completionist of the Twilight Saga, then check it out, okay? But I'd recommend you watch Part 1, which don't mind the critics. I defended that movie really easily. As best as I could, anyway. But anyway, that was a grand finale to Twilight. Enough said, alright? So, what are your thoughts on Breaking Dawn Part 2? Please tell me in the comment section below. If you liked the video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well. And be a part of the Big D Nation. And later this week, look for my ranking of the Twilight Saga. I haven't fi fixed it up yet, but I'm going to. But be, be on the lookout for it. And next time, I'll be bringing to you a review of the Disney animated flick known as The Princess and the Frog. Coming up next time. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like this, check out some of these other reviews. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the final installment of the Underworld series, Underworld Blood Wars. Or go to the upper right hand corner for my review of Coyote Ugly that I recently did or if you just want to take a little bit of a break go to the bomb left hand corner and see my review of Selena with JLo in the film that made her a big star. In the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.